morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo and Joe Bear in the house. And as always, you know, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, and subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know, this literally does not work. So let's get open for business and let's wake up the football guys. Wake up there, guys. Um, quick, quick answer here um, for everybody. I had a person who sent me a message yesterday asking, what are those called? Where'd you get them? Um, they are the 77 Dallas Cowboys legends by Dewberry Mint. Um, that was a gift from Joseph Heatherly, uh, not only a great fan and supporter of the channel, actually my brother from another mother. Um, he actually gave me that as well as the Dallas Cowboys chair there. They are on eBay. Sometimes you'll see them come across um, on there, but they're definitely a collector's item. Um, I have uh, Randy White as well as um, Tony Dorsett's signature on there. And what I'm going to try and do, hopefully now that the pandemic is over, in fact, um, there's the Chantilly uh, show, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this week coming up. There's no word if there's going to be any autograph signings or not. I'm betting that there probably won't be. But if I ever get the chance to get, uh, I definitely got to get Roger Staubach's and Drew Pearson's um, autograph in there. And there's a few more that are still alive. But I'm going to do my best to try and get all of those um, done. Because I, I, that's, to me, that's one of the greatest pieces that I've definitely gotten here. And if I can get those legends autographs, it'd be incredible. So you can look on eBay for stuff like that. But that's like... When they built those, it was before people really started collecting stuff like they do now. And that is a rare find. So shout out to Joseph Heatherly uh, for that. Okay, so we are in day number three of rookie minicamp. And I started thinking this morning um, about a couple of things where the Dallas Cowboys actually have a bit of an advantage this year. Now, we're hearing that, of course, the Cowboys, according to Jerry Jones, okay, don't talk about it too much, but you can count on us going to Oxnard. That's right. We're, we're going to Oxnard. So the Cowboys will be training, it looks like, in Oxnard. There's no word on uh, how many fans or how that'll work and so on. Uh, but you can best believe the Cowboys will do their best to make sure that they are seen and, uh, you know, the, the circus is in town. Mike McCarthy said he'll be going out there to actually scope out, scope out the uh, location in the very near future. In fact, I, I want to talk about the advantage that the Cowboys actually will have this year, which is perfect because of the young roster. But before I do, I do want to get a couple of the remarks from Mike McCarthy's press conference from yesterday because you, what you have to do um, a lot of times is not only listen to what they say, but also interpret between the lines of what they say. Because a lot of times you can kind of get an idea of what they're thinking and doing, but they don't come out and actually say it. So let's listen to Mike McCarthy. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about, uh, since the first one we've been through with you, what your, what your approach is in minicamp? Do you like to, you know, get guys stuff slowly and build on it or throw a lot at them and see how they process it and, and just what you want to accomplish coming out of this? Well, I think the first thing, when you, you look at what's going on this weekend with the rookie orientation, um, it, it's not really in line with you know, the traditional uh, rookie mini camps where you'd have you know, 55, 65 players, you know, whether it's you know, the combination of your, your rookie class, the free agents, and you, you also would have an, you know, probably 20, uh, 20 tryout players. So um, you know, our, our particular roster for, for this weekend is 30, was 31. So you have to take a totally different approach. Um, but as far as the volume of what they, what the players were exposed to, we, we took a, a fundamental, basic approach. Uh, frankly, we just operated in the in the first installation. So, um, and uh, the guys actually have really been very pleased with, um, particularly the defense. You know, we just had a chance to watch the the video from practice, and uh, you know, really didn't have. Hardly just you know minor uh, mental adjustments. So um, and they're off to a good start. In offense, you know, definitely takes a little longer uh, with the cadence and you know 
center exchange and things like that. So I, I really like the quality of work today. Um, it definitely improved from yesterday, uh, but overall they'll they'll walk away tomorrow uh, with a pretty clear understanding of what the first installation is on offense and defense, and um, and and really being integrated into the into the veterans program next week. Um, the veterans will be on install five, so we're we'll actually use tomorrow to help prep the the rookie class to to, to be ready for um, install five. Uh, to, just to so it's not brand new to them when they get in there with the veterans Monday, Tuesday, uh, th Thursday, Friday next week. Micah said he was starting out at middle linebacker. You talked about that plan and how does that relate to, to Jalen and, and Layton. I know Jalen played middle linebacker last year. Well, I, I think the most important thing is you have to have a starting point, and, and you, you do that with each and every each and every young player. So, um, you, know, you know, Mike is a – is is definitely uh, someone that's going to be part of our our plan next year. So you know, starting at Mike, you know, definitely makes the most sense. Um, it it's really has nothing to do with with the other players. I mean, it's building the foundation of being being you know able to play them uh, from the middle to defense, and, and that's really the focus. So uh, you, you know, I think with the depth clearly that we have at the linebacker position, uh, you know, we'll we'll continue to spend time. Uh, you know, frankly, working on packages, and you know, and there'll be some projection of how we can best utilize the whole group. Mike, in your past, you've had guys, you've integrated rookie linebackers like AJ Hawk and, and Clay. How mindful are you with with rookie linebackers and not overloading them too much, or is Mike a guy that even if you've been around just a little bit, that you think he can handle a bunch of different things? You know, I, I really think that's an individual. Uh, situation uh, based on the you know inside linebacker position, you know, and also I think it's you know AJ Hawk. We you know we drafted AJ in 2006, and um, you know you compare to the, the defensive packages today. There's you know there's you, you you have an opportunity to maybe play with more you know more personnel groups. So yeah, I, I think it's an individual situation. I, I think the most important thing is to get the is to get them grounded uh, in, into the inside, both Mike and Will, um, you know, starting with the communication responsibility. You know, I, we had both Jabril and um, and Mike wear the helmets. You know, they had, both have the experience of being the communicator. So, and, and that's something you, you really do with all your inside linebackers uh, because, you know, the more that you can do, and, and, and something we talk about a lot during the player – Player acquisition process with with Will McClay and the scouts and the coaches as we're evaluating players is every player has to have two jobs you know ideally because yeah. it's it, the more you can do and you know especially I think it's it is very clear at the inside linebacker position. Earlier, Jabril gave Mike a credit for his interception and carrying the wide receiver over the middle of the field. From what you've seen so far, how does Jabril and Mike's skill sets complement one another? Well, I think they're very complimentary to one another. They, they both play with high instinct and awareness. You can see that, you know, right away, even during the evaluation process. So, I, I really like the look of, of of those guys the last two days. Uh, there's definitely command and confidence. Um, you know, it's. You know, football is still football when you get out there. Uh, it's just you know, yeah, it doing it doing it a certain way. Um, the language is, is is usually the biggest threshold to get over, and uh, those guys are off to uh, off to a really good start. Mike, what's the advantage of the rookies having these days? So last year's rookies didn't have any of this stuff. Oh, I think it's a, it's a big advantage. Clearly, I, I think any time you have time to be with your players, it's an it's an advantage, especially in, in today's climate. I mean, we all know what the norm uh, used to be, so it, it was it's good to be able to to spend three full days and you know really probably four days coming off of the physicals and you know. But I I, I do want to give our our, our coaching staff a, a tremendous amount of credit for you know. The improvement that we've made in in year two of virtual meetings, so you can see that the the time that the players have have spent since since the draft, you know, since, since signing uh, with our football team, 
uh, you know, a lot of questions being asked, you know, during the presentations, and, and, I, and I thought our, our th I thought our rookies did a great job being on top for the most part of what was asked of them, you know, coming in here this weekend. So, I do really like the, the foundation that's been built with these rookies. Mike, how, how has the staff changed its, its virtual presentations? Is it more? Because again, this is a different medium than when you get them in a room necessarily. So, is it more? Uh, charts, graphics, or is it just uh, tearing down the information? What, what, what are some of the improvements you've seen? Well, I think the biggest thing is, you know, teaching style and, and, and make sure you're using all your resources that are available to you. So, I mean, it's, you know, I, I think like everybody probably in the league and frankly society is you've, you've had to, to learn and grow your, your virtual, you know, your virtual environment. And uh, we, we definitely have done that as a coaching staff. We, we, spent, a, we spent a lot of time on it. Uh, we, you know, frankly, we're still in a virtual format uh, this weekend. So we, we've had to meet with the players virtually uh, so they're at the hotel while we meet and then we're the only time we're able to allow to be around them in person has been in practice so um, and I think it's like a lot of things in this business you, you know the more you do it the better you get and and uh, we're clearly much better at the virtual teaching uh, this year than we were last year okay so here's the biggest improvement okay so a couple things um, they're allowed to have 10 days of OTAs practices, okay? Um, right now, the Cowboys have nine scheduled. Um, Mike McCarthy is looking at it and saying, now we've got an extra game, 17-game season, which is a lot. Hopefully, it's a 20-game season. Just saying, just hopefully. Um, but recognizing that it will be a long grind that you don't want to wear out the players. Now, enter the new rules and stuff. Now, we have four preseason games with the Hall of Fame game, but everybody else only has three preseason games. They've already shortened that aspect of it. Now, enter the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys, as we put it, we have 31 players, which is reduced from the normal amount of players that you would have because of COVID and the new rules and stuff like that. But those 31 players you're hoping that you're getting about 10 or 12 of these guys that are going to have to be contributors, be it you know, starting on the defense, backups on offense, or special teams players. So here's the advantage that the Cowboys have. Actually, this is one that they've done on their own, and I am so freaking glad. I I'm glad that I don't have to watch any more press conferences that are literally pixelating that they've actually done something about their freaking Wi-Fi with the Cowboys. Because if they were using that same Wi-Fi to try and do virtual reality workouts last year with the players, I can understand how come our defense was so lost. Because that stuff, uh, come on, you are the biggest franchise in football. You are valued more than any other sport. Any other. You've got the fourth highest paid player in all of sports on the team for this year, and it's only this year. It's only a one-year thing, so don't don't go crazy that Dak is way overpaid, okay? They're just making up for the money. They didn't pay him the first five years. But be that as it may, how the hell is it that you, with everybody wanting to watch you, had some of the worst Wi-Fi and Internet service in the world, especially being called AT&T? So shout out to the Cowboys for getting that fixed. And I dare say that that alone will make the Dallas Cowboys better, at least teaching virtual reality with the players. The second part of this is, this is a little bit of an advantage for the Cowboys because they're going to be a very young team. This Dallas Cowboys team will probably be one of the younger teams in the NFL, which means you don't have a lot of experience. One of the issues of last year was because we didn't have the OTAs with these rookies um, in person, because we ended up having a shortened training camp, um, basically the first 10 days were strength and conditioning, and then you had like 14 practices, and now we're playing games. Keep in mind, we've had three practices to come today, and they're still in the first install. First install. And... They can do those installs and telling you what to do. Hey, this is the defense. You know, Quentin, your head up on the center. And this call, you're going to shade to the nose on the left in the A-gap. 
Okay. All right. I get that. But until you get out on the field in real time and the linebacker is calling that out and that you're actually in your stance and actually practicing and getting muscle memory, you don't really learn it. Now, for the Cowboys, this is a good thing, the fact that they actually have four preseason games. Because the first preseason game, especially the Hall of Fame game, you know that the starters aren't going to touch the field, which I'm fine with. I don't need to see Dak Prescott out on the field for the Hall of Fame game. But what I do want to see is I want to see these young rookies getting extra work because the Cowboys can start training camp before other teams. Cowboys and Steelers, they've got the Hall of Fame game. They get to start practicing before everybody else. That, my friends, can go a long ways of hitting the ground running when the season starts. You can go ahead and say, hey, we're having, you know, Imano Imano fight for who's going to be on this team preseason week one. I need you guys to really show me what's worth so you can start getting your mind, getting these guys with experience, getting these guys in real-time action at full speed because you don't do full speed in practice anymore. You don't take guys to the ground. You don't tackle anymore. So you can look at this as saying the Cowboys have a full speed practice to really get the young guys up to speed. I love it myself. And this is one of those things that you start looking at. It, it, it may seem minor right now, but when you take a little, you know, little advantage here or a little thing that happens there and you start stacking up these little things these little things start becoming big things. And in football, the difference between winning and losing can literally be like that, that little much. One turnover here, one blown call there can be the difference of winning and losing. The Cowboys can make sure that their players understand the theory of what they're trying to accomplish. They can get them in shape. They can get them ready to roll and then just see which way the football bounces. <sighs> Another Sunday without football. But we sit here. I know it sucks. 116 days, 10 hours, 49 minutes, and 45 seconds away from kickoff of the Dallas Cowboys versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm Mark Holmes. And Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe for the Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to say is, how about you, Joe? Yeah.